There has been an attempted insurrection. The country is on lockdown. A duty to the dead unsettles hastily made laws. Your name in Greek means something like against birth or instead of being born. What is there instead of being born? It's not that we want to understand everything or even to understand anything. We want to understand something else. I keep returning to Brecht, who made you do the whole play with a door strapped to your back. A door can have diverse meanings. I stand outside your door. The odd thing is, you stand outside your door too. That door has no inside, or if it has an inside, you are the one person who cannot enter it. For the family who lives there, things have gone irretrievably wrong. To have a father who is also your brother means having a mother who is your grandmother. A sister who is both your niece and your aunt. And another brother you love so much you want to lie down with him, thigh to thigh in the grave. Or so you say, glancingly early in the play, and no one mentions it again afterwards. Oh, you always exaggerate. My father used to tell me, and let's footnote here Hegel calling women the eternal irony of the community. How seriously can we take you? Are you Antigone between two deaths, as Lacan puts it, or a parody of Creon's law and Creon's language? So Judith Butler. Who also finds in you the occasion for a new field of the human. Then again, an exemplar of masculine intellect and moral sense is George Eliot's judgment. While to several modern scholars you, perhaps predictably, sound like a terrorist. And Zizek compared you triumphantly with Tito, the leader of Yugoslavia, saying no to Stalin in 1942. Speaking of the 40s, you made a good impression on the Nazi high command and simultaneously on the leaders of the French resistance when they all sat in the audience of John Anglis Antigone. Opening night. Paris, 1944. I don't know what colour your eyes were, but I can imagine you rolling them now. Let's return to Brecht. Maybe he got you best. To carry one's own door will make a person clumsy, tired and strange. On the other hand, it may come in useful if you go places that don't have an obvious way in, like normality, or an obvious way out, like the classic double bind. Well, that's your problem. My problem is to get you and your problem across into English from ancient Greek. All that lies hidden in these people, your people. Crimes and horrors and years together. A family, what we call a family. One of my earliest memories, wrote John Ashbury in New York Magazine, 1980, is of trying to peel off the wallpaper in my room. Not out of animosity, but because it seemed there must be something fascinating. Behind its galleons and globes and telescopes. This reminds me of Samuel Beckett. <laughs> who described in a letter his own aspirations towards language. To bore hole after hole in it until what cowers behind it seeps through. Dear Antigone, you also are someone keeping faith. With a deeply other organisation that lies just beneath what we see or what we say. To quote Creon, you are autonomous, a word made up of out of self and no most law. Autonomy sounds like a kind of freedom, but you aren't interested in freedom. Your plan is to sew yourself into your own shroud using the tiniest of stitches. How to translate this? I take inspiration from John Cage who, when asked how he composed four minutes, 33 seconds, answered, I built it up gradually out of many small pieces of silence. Antigone, you do not. Any more than John Cage, aspire to a condition of silence. You want us to listen to the sound of what happens when everything normal, musical, careful, conventional, or pious is taken away. Oh, sister and daughter of Oedipus, who can be innocent in dealing with you? There was never a blank slate. We were always already anxious about you. Perhaps you know that in Ingeborg Bachmann's poem from the last years of her life that begins, I lose my screams. Dear Antigone, I take it as the task of the translator to forbid that you should ever lose your screams. Enter Antigone and Ismene. We begin in the dark, and birth is the death of us. Who said that? Hegel. Sounds more like Beckett. He was paraphrasing Hegel. I don't think so. Whoever it was, whoever we are, dear sister, ever since we were born from the evils of Oedipus, what bitterness, pain, disgust, disgrace, or moral shock have we been spared? And now this edict, you've heard the edict. I've heard no edict. That our two brothers are dead by one another's hands and the Argive army gone from this city is all I know. That's what I thought. That's why I called you out here. What's the matter? You have your plan to look. Creon is resolved to honour one of our brothers with burial. 
the other not. Eta Kaluti is laid in the ground in accordance with justice and law. Polynices is to lie unwept and unburied. Sweet sorry meat for the little lusts of birds. Noble Crayon draws our attention to this edict, yours and my attention. Whoever transgresses it gets death. So what do you say? What could I say? What could I do? If you join me, if you join my action. At what risk? Where is your mind? If you help me, help me lift the corpse. Creon says unlawful to do so. Antigone says unholy not to. Oh, sister, don't cross the line. Dear sister, my dead are mine, and yours as well as mine. Whoever we are, think, sister. Father's daughter, daughter's brother, sister's mother, mother's son. His mother and his wife were one. Our family has doubled, triple degraded and dirty in every direction. Moreover, we two are alone, and we are girls. Girls cannot force their way against men. Yet I will. Sweet sister, you aim too high. True sister, yet how sweet to lie upon my brother's body, thigh to thigh. Your heart's so hot, thou sister. O oh, one and only head of my sister whose blood intersects with my own in too many ways. The dead are cold, they'll welcome me. You're a person in love with the impossible. And when my strength is gone, I'll stop. It's wrong. Don't say that or I'll have to hate you. He will hate you too. Just let me go, for I'll not endure anything so grievous as what robs me of a noble death. Go then, but no, you go as one beloved, although you go without your mind. Exit Antigone and Ismene. And to chorus. The glories of the world come sharking in all red and gold. We won the war, salvation struts, the streets of seven-gated Thebes. The man from Margos fled, the one who swung above our land on snow-white screams, the one who overweened our walls, seven spears in his mouth instead of teeth. That one fled before filling his cheeks with blood. Before any fire, the noise of war was stretched along his back. The boaster fled. Zeus hates a bolster. So a notion of them coming at us, raised his hand, they hit the ground. They were the man from Argos. War made them all insane. Seven gates, and in each gate a man, and in each man a death at the seventh gate. Two brothers grew into each other's hearts as pain. Now victory is ours, let there be forgetting. Let Thebes shake with joy. Here comes Creon, rowing his new power boat. Enter Creon. Here are Creon's verbs for today. Adjudicate, legislate, scandalize, capitalize. Here are Creon's nouns. Men, reason, treason, death, ship of state, mine. Mine isn't a noun. It is if you capitalize it. Enter God. Well. Well, not what? Well, we... Well, we what? Well, we saw someone. Saw someone what? Or... Actually, no one. Was it someone or no one? Well, hypothetically. You goat's anus. Tell me who buried that body I said was unlawful to touch. Don't know. So find out. Exit Creon and God. Many terribly quiet customers exist, but none more terribly quiet than man. His footsteps pass so perilously soft across the sea in marble winter up the stiff blue waves and every tuesday down he grinds the unastonishable earth with horse and shutter shatters too the cheeks of birds and traps them in his forest headlights salty silvers roll into his net he weaves it just for that this terribly quiet customer he dooms animals and mountains technically by yoke. He makes the bull bend, the horse to its knees. And utterance and thought as clear as complicated air, and moods that make a city moral, these he taught himself. The snowy cold he knows to flee, 
And every human exigency crackles as he plugs it in. Every outlet works but one. Death stays dark. Death he cannot do. Fabrications notwithstanding. Evil, good, laws, gods. Honest, oath-taking, notwithstanding. Hilarious in his high city. You see him cantering just as he please. The lava, up to here. Enter, God with Antigone. This, this, so, oh, I don't know. Let's not mention gods. Let's not mention Oedipus. He is Antigone. Please don't say she's the one. She's the one. She did it. I did. I got her. Oh, perfect. Here's Creon. Enter Creon. Here's Creon, nick of time. Well, miracles do happen. I swore I wouldn't come back, but I did, because I got her. She's the one, she did it, and I got her. She was fiddling with the grave. I'm off the hook. Fiddling? What do you mean, fiddling? I'm a free man. I'm free, I'm off the hook. Explain how you caught her. She was burying him. How, where, when? Are you going to tell me more? Are you sure? The corpse, the illegal, she was burying him. What more did you want? Burying him how? And where did you see her? And how did you catch her? I want details. Details, okay. You threatened me. I went back, wiped off all the dust, left that body bare, sat up on a hill. Was it hot? Yes. Uh, was there putrefaction and vermiculation? Yes. Was there noon sun stink? Yes. Did I doze off? No, I did not. I kept me awake then. All of a sudden, a storm came up. A wind tore the hair off the trees, lofted the dust with fear. I shut my eyes and when I sneaked to look, there she was. The child in her bird grief, the bird in her child reft grave cry, howling and cursing. She poured dust onto the body with both hands. She poured water onto the body with both hands. I seized her, I charged her, it made me sad. But still, that's less than my own safety. You like nouns? It's libation, done deal, dead reckoning. Actually, I prefer verbs. Got her. And you, with your head down, you're the one. Bingo. Go. Exit God. You knew it was against the law. Well, if you call that law. I do. Zeus does not. Justice does not. The dead do not. What they call law did not begin today or yesterday. When they say law, they do not mean a statute of today or yesterday. They mean the unwritten, unfailing, eternal ordinances of the gods that no human being can ever outrun. Of course I will die, crayon or no crayon, and death is fine. This has no pain. To leave my mother's son lying out there unburied, that would be pain. Ra's her father, isn't she? You think you're iron, but I can bend you. I'm the man here. Yes, you are. I'll bend your sister too. Can we just get this over with? No, let's split hairs a while longer. I'd say you're the only one in Thebes who sees things this way, wouldn't you? You're autonomous, autartic, autodidactic, autodomestic, autoempathetic, autotherapeutic, autohistorical, autometaphorical, autoerotic, and autobidguiled. Actually, no, they all think like me, but you've nailed their tongues to the floor. You're not ashamed. No shame in honouring one's kin. Wasn't the other brother your kin too? Same mother, same father. Yet you honour the one, disgrace the other. My dead do not say so. The one a criminal, the other a defender of our land. Death needs to have death's laws obeyed. Same law for good and evil, patriot and traitor. Oh, who knows how these definitions work down there? Enemy is always enemy, dead or alive. I am born for love, not hatred. I will not be worsted by a woman. Enter Ismene. Here's Ismene. Why is she blushing? Here's Ismene. Why is she snaking in here? I did the deed. I share the blame. You did nothing. You shared nothing. Leave my death alone. I want to row the boat with you. Save yourself. But I'll be so lonely. Some think the world is made of bodies. Some think forces. I think a man knows nothing but his foot when he burns it in the hot fire. Quoting Hegel again. Hegel says I am wrong. But right to be wrong. No ethical consciousness. Oh, is that how he puts it? So I wonder. Let's say my unconscious while remaining unconscious, could also know the laws of consciousness by which I am condemned for disobeying them. I mean, can a person be so completely conscious of being unconscious that she is guilty of her own repression? Is that what I'm guilty of? 
Well, we all think you're a grand girl. Is this an argument? I can help you suffer. N no! I, I can give you reasons not to die. No! And I can give you reasons not to kill her. Uh, your own son, for one. Oh, he'll find other ruts to plow. You women in your bed make me sick. Guards, take them away. Exit Antigone, Ismene. Blessed be they whose lives do not taste of evil. But if some god shakes your house, ruin arrives. Ruin does not leave. It comes stalling over the generations. It comes rolling the black night, salt up from the ocean floor and all your trashed coasts groan. Archives of grief I see falling upon this house. Death on birth, birth on death, there is no end to it. Some god is piling them on. One last root was reaching up for the light in the house of Oedipus, but the bloody dust of death hacks her down, mows her down, all the tall mad mountains of her mind. Zeus, you win, you always win. The whole oxygen of power belongs to you. Sleep cannot seize it. Time does not tire it. Your mount Olympus glows like one white stone around the slaw. Nothing vast enters the lives of mortals without ruin. But of course, there is hope. Look, here comes hope, wandering in to tickle your feet. Then you notice the souls are on fire. A wise word, if evil looks good to you, some god is heading you on the high road to ruin. Oh, here's Hymen. Here's Hymen in pain and rage, cheated of his future bride. Enter Hymen. In a rage about your future bride, or are we still friends? Father, I'm yours. Good attitude, son. Good heart in your chest. I need you like that. We all the same friends, damage the same enemies. Some children are useless. Some are just trouble. And who would disagree? This makes people laugh at the father. A fact of life I'll say to you now, I'll say it one time. When you lay yourself under a pleasure female, you take an open wound into your house and your life. Spit her out. Let her snake her way down and seduce some boy in hell. You know she disobeyed me, alone out of all the, all the city. I will not be made a liar. I'll kill her. Let her call on Zeus and blood and kinship. Who cares? Should I nourish disorder with my, within my own family? No, I should not. My public is watching. Father, the gods grow minds in men as the most precious equipment they have. Yet I could not, would not, do not know how to say you are wrong. It may be some other way. I don't know. Might turn out I'm your defender. I'm yours. I keep watch. No one says or does or disparages any of why your dread eye, your displeasure, no one. Yet I hear there is talk, there are shadows. This girl, here I posit a lacuna, this girl does not deserve to die. The town is sad, most glorious deeds, mm -hmm. most terrible of deaths, they say. She only chose to keep her brother's body from raw dogs and eating birds. This sort of talk. I don't know. Night's coming, oh father, when you ride uphill, got to shift your weight pedal to pedal, side to side, ride the rhythm, don't hoard your own custom, don't haul old anger up over your tongue and your, your mind. They go blind, trees bend, ships loosen the rigging. No single human being has perfect knowledge. I like a good argument, marrow versus marrow. You two could learn from each other. Me, at my age, go to school and get wisdom from this stripling. You would learn nothing unjust. Nothing unjust to honour anarchy. I do not honour anarchy. Mm, is this girl not tainted with that malady? Thebes says otherwise. Shall Thebes prescribe to me how I should rule? Listen to yourself. You sound like a boy dictator. Whom else should the government depend on? No city belongs to a single man. Surely a city belongs to its ruler. Why not find a desert and rule all alone? This fellow, it seems, is the woman's toy. If you are the woman, it's you I care for. 
O oh, shameless, thou utter miscreant, to prosecute thine own father. Yes, for I see you doing wrong. Wrong to respect mine own prerogatives. You don't respect, you trample on the prerogatives of the gods. O oh, polluted, O oh, dastard nature, O oh, subject to a woman. But not subject to injustice. All thy words plead for her. And for you, and me, and the gods below. Thou canst never marry her this side the grave. Then she'll die, and take another with her. Doth thy boldness push thee even to threats? Threat? What threat? Thou shalt rue the day of thy witless teaching. If you weren't my father, I'd say you were mad. <laughs> thou woman's chattel seek not to tickle me. You talk and you talk and never listen. Sayest thou so? Well now, well now, I say. Thou shalt revile me to thy cost. Fetch out the loathed creature. Let her die hard against her bridegroom now, this very instant before his eyes. Never. Exit Hymen. Well, he's gone in anger and pain. Let him go. Big man, I have deaths to do. Both girls. No, just the loud one. How? I'll find her a desert in the neighbourhood. I'll bury her alive with a bit of food. Sacred closet, terrible leisure. No doubt the god of death will save her life. Exit Creon. Eros. No one can fight you. Eros, you clamp down on every living thing, on girls' cheeks, on oceans, on wild fields. Not even an immortal can invade you, certainly not a creature of the day. Why they go mad? You change the levels of a person's mind. This hymen crisis is all you're doing. You shook his blood. You glow on girls' eyelids. Who cares about the laws of the land? Aphrodite, you play with us. You play deeply. Enter Antigone. I can no longer restrain the stream of tears when I see Antigone here passing to the room where we all go in the end. Hegel says people want to see their lives on stage. Look at me, people. I go my last road. I see my last light. Look. Death, who gathers all of us into his old bent arms in the end, is gathering me. But I am still alive. No wedding, no wedding song, no wedding chamber. Yet I shall lie in the bed of the river of death while I am still alive. Yes, but won't you win glory? Won't you be praised? It's not as if you're dying of disease or war. You choose to live autonomous, and so you die the only one of mortals to go down to death alive. Are you mockers of me? You grabbing old men, are you laughing at me, though I'm not yet gone? O oh, springs of the river of Thebes, O oh, reaches of the plains of Thebes, bear me witness, no one shed a tear for me, as I went to my strange new grave. For I'm a strange new kind of in-between thing, aren't I? Not at home with the dead, nor with the living. You're clumsy, it's true, clumsy as your father. Remember how Brecht had you do the whole play with a door strapped to your back? I don't want to talk about him, or him, or him. All that plowing in the dark. I go to them now, one final intersection. Oh, my brother, you have despoiled me. You despoiled yourself. Piety is nice, but authority is authority. Why must you always make your own laws? Unwept, unwed. Unlord, I go. Enter Creon. Take her, we're clean of this girl. O tomb, O bridal chamber, O house in the ground forever. I was an organised person and this is my reward. I organised your deaths, my dear ones. All of you, father, mother, brother, when you died, you ask, would I have done it for a husband or a child? My answer is no, I would not. A husband or a child can be replaced. But who can grow me a new brother? Is this a weird argument? Creon thought so. But I don't know the words go wrong. They call my piety impiety. I'm alone on my insides. I died long ago. Who suffers more? I wonder who suffers more. Your soul is blowing apart. Get a move on. Next word is death. Death? O oh, Thebes, O oh, gods, O oh, look, I go. 
I'm the last one left in the line of kings. I was caught in an act of perfect piety. Exit Antigone. How is a Greek chorus like a lawyer? They're both in the business of searching for a precedent, finding an analogy, locating a prior example, so as to be able to say, this terrible thing we are witnessing now is not unique, you know, it happened before, or something much like it. We are not at a loss how to think about this, we are not without guidance. There is a pattern. We can find a historically parallel case and file it away under Antigone buried alive, Friday afternoon, compare case histories 7, 17 and 49. Now, I could dig up those case histories, tell you about Danaeus and Lycagos and the sons of Phineas people locked up in a room or a cave or their own dark mind. It wouldn't help you. It doesn't help me. It's Friday afternoon. There goes Antigone to be buried alive. Is there any way we can say this is normal, rational, forgivable, or even in the widest definition, just, no, not really. Here comes Tiresias. Enter Tiresias, led by a boy. Hail, you kings of Thebes. I begin by addressing the wrong person. Because I'm blind. Is that what you think? Because I'm blind. What's up, Tiresias? You're standing on a razor. I hear the birds. They're barbarismanized. They're making monster sounds. The fires won't light. The rights go wrong. You know my technologies. You know the failing of the sign is in itself a sign. From you, a sickness. From you, a suppuration. From you, a surfeit comes out upon the city. This pile of rot that was the son of Oedipus. The boy is dead. Stop killing him. You fake. You profiteer. You entrepreneur! You're too quiet. Watch out, Creon. Watch out. I see the future plunging toward you, and it contains the corpse of your own son. You've made a structural mistake with life and death, my dear. You've put the living underground and kept the dead up here. That is so wrong. That is so wrong. Exit Tiresias, with boy. I hate to mention it, but historically, his prophecies are never false. I know. I'm shaking. Take advice. Tell me. Set the girl free. You mean? Quick, quick, quick! It hurts. Quick, quick, quick. I go. Exit Creon. Another, an hour, an hour and a half, a year, a split second, a decade, this instant, a second, a split second, and now a nick and neck, Creon rushes out, all the guards rush out, hang by the neck until... Here we are, in a song about joy. Here we are in a day about dust, the dust it takes to house enemies, the house it takes to dust justice, the justice it takes to dodge a bullet, the bullet it takes to justify lovers, the love in which to delete your own darling, the darling you dust. The dust you disperse, the you who does not, does not what, does not nick. Here we are, we're all fine, we're standing in the nick of time. Enter messenger. There is no stanza of human life that I would praise or blame. Luck sends your power boat up or down the waves at any given moment. No, no seer can see what's next. Creon, I thought, was an enviable man, for he saved this land of Cadmos. 
He got his hands on monarchy. He stowed it straight, and furrows of children flourished around him. Now all that's gone. When joy betrays you, I do not count your life alive. A corpse is more alive. Be as rich as you like, be absolute. If your joy goes, I wouldn't buy you for a shadow of smoke. You are the messenger. What's your message? They're dead. Who's dead? Hyman's dead. By whose hand? A hand very like his own. Okay, Theresius. Point, match, game. Game's not over. You're right. Here's Eurydice, wife of Creon. What's she up to? Enter Eurydice. This is Eurydice's monologue. It's her only speech in the play. You may not know who she is. That's okay. Like poor Mrs. Ramsey, who died in a bracket of To the Lighthouse. She's the wife of a man whose moods intensify the world of this story. The world sundered by her. I say sundered by her. That girl with the undead strapped to her back. A state of exception marks the limit of the law. This violent thing, this fragile thing. Try to unclench, we said to her. She never did. We got a bike, we got a therapist, that poor, sad man with his odd ideas. Some days he made us sit on the staircase, all on different steps, or videotaped us, but when we watched it, it was all shadows. Finally, we expelled her. We had to, using the logic of friend and foe that she denies. But how can she deny the rule to which she is an exception? Is she autoimmune? No, no, she is not. Have you heard this expression, the nick of time? What is a nick? I asked my son. What is a nick? I asked my son. When the messenger comes, I set him straight. I tell him, nobody's missing. We're all here. We're all fine. <laughs> Why do you messengers always exaggerate? Exit Eurydice, bleeding from all orifices. Eurydice does not exit. Oh, beloved queen, I wish I could say I did not see what was left of Polynikes. The dog-torn parts, the parts lying, the parts gathered, the parts burned on a sacred pile. I wish I could say I did not see the stone shrieking, the girl hanging, the boy, a bloody lung. The father on his knees, the bolt leaving the wall, the sword sinking up to its own mouth. Oh, my queen, I did not see death marry them at last. Oh, so shyly, but I did. I did see it. Exit Eurydice. Exit Eurydice. Exit Eurydice. Exit Eurydice. Too big a silence. Exit messenger. Here comes Crayon, dragging his, dragging his, dragging his what? Enter Creon with the body of Hymen. Here is my crime. It was my hard killing mind it was. My deadly's going wrong. Oh, my child. Too soon dead. Oh, this sacrilege that I called public policy. It was my child, assassinated by my folly. You're late to learn what's what, aren't you? Late to learn? Oh, yes, I am. Late, too late, oh then, oh then some god slammed down on me. A heavy weight, some good sh god shook me out on those raw roads. Alas for the joy of my life that I've trampled underfoot. Alas for us all going dark. Enter messenger. Okay, Creon, widen your eyes. What now? What worse? Eurydice is uh, dead. Eurydice is dead. O oh, filth of death who can clean you out. O oh, laugh of death, you crack me, you crack me open. You crack me open again. Here comes kill, Creon's verb for today. Now he is perfectly blended with pain. Eurydice cursed you. Your wife cursed you, assassin of your own child, she said. And she undid her eyes to the dark. Yes, yes, of course, of course she did. She blamed you. And then? Stabbed herself in the liver. Yes. Yes, she did, of course, in the liver. Yes, I am to blame. Take Creon away. He no more exists than someone who does not exist. Briefest is best when evil is all around. I want Creon's death. That's the future. This is the present. We deal with the present. To die is my only prayer. Then don't pray at all. You don't get to run this. Take Creon away. Please take Creon away. 
Where can I look? Where can I turn? Everything I touch goes wrong. An unbearable fate has loaded itself onto my head. Last word. Wisdom. Wisdom. Better get some. Even too late. Exeunt omnes. Oh. oh my gosh, look, superb! Oh. Oh my gosh. Bravo! 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 Oh, that was sick, <laughs> <laughs>